Hello and welcome to Geeky Bit. Today we're gonna do a tutorial. It's gonna be on setting up a drive image for the blue SCSI, but it will also be compatible with the raw SCSI as they use the same kind of drive images. So first, before we get going, we're gonna need some things. Of course, we're gonna need a blue SCSI, and then we're also gonna need a micro SD card, and then we'll need some sort of micro SD to USB adapter. We're going to want to get a blank pre-made drive image. We do that by going over to the GitHub. As you can see here, we're going to scroll down. And once we get down here, we're going to click on this link right here. And then right here, we go to where it says download. We click that. And then we're going to go save file, not open file. And then we'll click OK. All right. Now let's go ahead and go to the download folder. Open up that file. Open up this file. And then we go ahead and go down to the two gigabyte file and then we copy this right here. And then what we're going to do is open up another folder. This is where we're going to put it. So we'll paste it here. And then once it gets done, we will be ready to move on. As you can see, it's almost done. There we go. Now that we've done that, we want to get a bootable image for our emulator. Okay. So we want to go to this website right here uh, and we want to scroll down and click on this link right here. This will give us a bootable image. We click save as and then once it's done downloading, we're going to go to the download folder and then we're going to copy the file and then we're going to paste it into that directory we're working on. So we'll paste it here and once it gets done, that's pretty much it. Of course, I will also show you how to do this on the Macintosh, but you don't need me to show you the web browser parts. Next, we are going to download an ISO that will contain all the information we need for any operating system for the Macintosh. We start by going to this website right here, and then we're going to click on ISO image and then click the little download thing. Click save as again. And then once it's done, we are going to go to the download folder and we just copy this file directly. So we will just use control C and then we paste it over into this folder here. And real quick, here's what it looks like with me putting the files in a folder on the Macintosh. So now we're on to setting up Sheep Shaver. We'll do it on Windows first and then I'll show you what I did to do it on the Mac as well, just in case you're not a Windows person. So this tutorial is not about setting up Sheep Shaver or Basculus 2, which is very similar to Sheep Shaver. So I'm going to assume you already know how to do that. With all of that out of the way, let's set up the emulator to write to our blank disk that we downloaded. So we're going to go ahead and launch the settings GUI. So we'll add a drive. I've gone ahead and already removed all the other drives I have for the emulator. We'll add this one first as it's our boot drive. Next, we're going to load up a ISO that has all of our OS's on it. And then lastly, we are going to go ahead and add the blank media that we downloaded. All right, now that we've done all that, we should be ready to start this. So we'll click start. Let me just get the window in frame here. There we go. And as you can see, there's our boot drive. There's our OS drive. And then there is our blank media drive, which is Mac HD. So as you can see, it's empty. So good to go. Now we're going to do a few things here. Uh, ultimately, what I do want to do, let me open this up because this is, we'll have that for later. That's where our OS is. We're going to want to set it to the system that I am making the install for. So we go to control panel, we click on I wish I were. Now we are going to select a Macintosh LC, the base model LC, because that is what I happen to have. Let me get to it here, there we go. And then we close this, and then we're gonna restart the system. And it's booting back up pretty quickly here. And let me close this. <laughs> I almost closed the wrong window. All right. So we'll go to Mac OS and then we are going to go to system 7.5 because ultimately I want 7.5.5 installed. So we'll click on net installer or net install rather. All right. Let it mount up all the disk images so we can install. Now you can do any kind of install you want. I'm going to do a custom install to show you. So you can click the drop down 
to have everything uh, or to select individual things rather. Uh, I'm just selecting everything on it. And as you can see, here's the, the info tells you about it. So if you want to know more information, but we are installing literally everything it will allow us to install. Okay. Now we're going to want to switch to the disc that we want to install to. So Mac HD, and then we'll click install. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and have it fast forward through this section. So once it gets done, we will be ready to move on. Okay, there we go. Now we click quit as it is ready to go. So we'll close this here. We'll go back to the Mac OS and we're going to go to system updates and we're going to go to a 7.5.5 and then we're going to install that as well. So we go here, we switch it to the correct disk, and then we click install. And this process goes pretty quickly here. The last thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some of the utilities over from the, the bootable drive that we have here, because there are some things that I would like to be on this disk. But first, let's take a look at some of the stuff we got here. So we got all of our stuff we're supposed to have. And under Apple Extras, we got a bunch of extra stuff here. Stuff that we probably won't even need to use. And in fact, I'll probably make another image, but this is just to teach you how to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the boot drive. Now I want to copy these over. So some of the files and folders. So what I'm gonna do is make a folder called Tools. And then under Tools, we are gonna drag and drop a lot of these folders over. So let me resize these windows so I have everything that I want. Okay. And, oh, that's right. Need to make sure I'm using the right button. Oh, I'm still not, there we go. Doing the shift key. All right, there we go. Now we just drag it over and drop it onto tools. Now this will copy over pretty quickly. And this is pretty much what we need to do to get everything to go. Oh yeah, and um, one last thing I want to do is I want to add a applications folder. So we'll just make a new folder and call it applications. And now we are ready to go. All right, let's take a look at what we're doing on the Macintosh to do that with Sheep Shaver as well. Okay, I'm just adding the last drive here. This is our blank drive, which isn't blank because we just use it on the PC. So we'll save and quit. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to force close this because I don't think it'll, yeah, see, it won't let me quit. So we will just force close this with the activity monitor. So we'll just go here, click the little stop sign, force quit. People who may be more familiar with this might be able to get it to work better, but this isn't a tutorial to teach you how to use this. As you can see, we have it just like on the Windows system, except for we have a thing called Unix. This is our actual shared folder. All right, and then here's our Mac OS. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, delete everything on this. We'll highlight it all, drag it over the trash, and no, oh, thank goodness it's still highlighted. We'll drop it in the trash. And then we will go to empty trash can and then okay yeah continue 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 okay continue oh my goodness we're gonna have to do some stuff with some of the files in the trash can just a moment here all right now that it's done let's open up the trash this will take a moment please bear with me so we're gonna go ahead and jump ahead here okay now that we have all of that out of the way let's go ahead and go to legacy recovery go to mac os and then we're going to install system 7.5 so we'll go to net installer and then it's going to mount all the images and this will take a while and then we'll click ok and then we'll just do an easy install switch the disk to the right disk and then we're going to start installing all right so i'm going to go ahead and we will just cut this out because we've seen this already Okay, let me go ahead and quit this. And I think I'm gonna restart the system because I want a bigger screen. It was just taking a long time to install, so I did want to restart the install. All right, so here we go. 
now we have a much bigger screen so you guys can see it a lot easier. Uh, okay, here we go. Now we go ahead and go to system update 7.5.5 net installer. Okay, I've jumped ahead and then that's pretty much it. Now we have that installed. Let's talk about how to name the file correctly and copy it over to our USB drive. So first things first, let's go ahead and copy it from the blue SCSI folder we made. And then we will go ahead and paste it into our USB drive. All right, this is gonna take a while, so we're gonna go ahead and cut ahead here. Okay, with the copying done, let's go ahead and rename it. And we will, oh, oh better click on it again. We will call it HD, and then we want it to be ID zero. And then the other thing is also zero, and then underscore 512 for how many sectors. And then we will call it Mac HD. And that is how you name it correctly. Of course, you can also name it other things, but you want it to be under 32 characters. And the first part has to be what I said it is. This part right here. So the HD, you can go uh, 0 through 6, and then 0, and then underscore 512. And that's pretty much it. So before we copy over any games or applications, let's see if it boots up. Okay, let's see if this is going here. We've got our mouse, and look at that, a Happy Mac. So it looks like it's good to go. All right, awesome. Now let's go ahead and add some games and applications real quick. Okay, now we're back in the emulator. We have, of course, added this, but this time this drive is mounted from the USB. We're gonna go to applications, because we're gonna copy over some games. So here is the share on my PC. And then here I have other things that I've added already, uh, but let me go ahead and go to games. And uh, the first thing I think we will add is Hoyle right here. So, yep, that has the game in it. So we're gonna just, oh, let me click on it correctly and we'll drop it over there. And then we will go ahead and go to Wolfenstein 3D, mount the two discs and let me get it mounted. And then we'll install that and we'll click continue here and then we'll go to custom. Make sure we don't need to do anything. Okay. Go to install. We're going to select the right drive. So going to desktop and then go to Mac HD. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the applications folder. And then under here, we're going to delete folder because we don't need to have it say folder. That's kind of redundant. And then we will click install. And then there we go. I'll we'll close that. And we'll take a look, close this, and there are our two things. So that's how we do it. Okay, now let me show you from scratch how we do it on the Macintosh. Okay, so here we have the downloads folder on the Macintosh, and then we have Sheep Shaver opened. So we're gonna put it in the shared folder. So we're gonna take all of these, drag them and drop them over. And then now that they've done that, let's go ahead and launch Sheep Shaver. Okay. So here we have our Macintosh, and then we go up to Unix, and then there we have our files. So we'll go to Applications, and then we just move it over there, and then double click on it. And then of course it'll get it unstuffed, and then it'll put it in the thing. And that's pretty much just like we do it on the PC. So that's gonna be where we end this one here. You've done everything just like I showed you in this tutorial, but somehow it's still not working. So this section is for troubleshooting. So let's put our SD card back in our computer and see if a log file was written. As you can see in this image, that's what it should look like if a log file was written. Now let's open up that log file and examine it. It should look something like this if it was correct. So if we open up the SD card but have no log file and some flashing lights on our blue SCSI shown here, we probably have some other issues. If this was a kit and not a pre-assembled unit, let's take a look at the solder points on the micro SD card adapter and make sure we have them correct. This is an image that shows them all soldered correctly you may have a little more solder than this on yours, but make sure there are no solder bridges. If that was good, let's go ahead and use the SD card formatter utility. We will go ahead and do a overwrite format on our SD card, and you can download it from a link in the description. 
after you use the SD formatter tool, if it's still not working and you've tried everything else, you may want to try a different SD card, preferably another brand if you have one. Something to note also, if you have a Mac Plus, you may need to do a diode mod for it to work correctly. Lastly, if all else fails, you can always go check out the Discord for Open Retro SCSI, as there is a Blue SCSI support section there, and a link to that Discord is in the description below. I hope this video tutorial helped you, and you are on your way getting your Retro Macintosh up and running with old games and applications, and just the way you wanted it. And if so, feel free to click that like button, and if you aren't subscribed so already, feel free to do so as well and if you'd like to get notifications of my future videos click that bell button